Hello and welcome to the Google Analytics tutorial series. I'm Matt Landers, and in this tutorial, we're going to cover custom dimensions and metrics. So first, let's define what a dimension and a metric are. So a dimension is a piece of data that describes an action that a user took. Now, this is a string. It's something that's descriptive about what happened. And a metric is also something that describes what happened, but it's a numerical value that can be aggregated. OK, so let's have an example of what a dimension and metric are. So in Google Analytics already, there's a purchase event. And part of that event, we can provide an item category, like a shirt. That would be a dimension. But we can also provide its price or the quantity that was purchased. And that would be a metric. Now, a custom dimension is a dimension that you come up with yourself. It's not already provided to you by analytics. And it has something to do with you and your business and is specific to what you're trying to accomplish. Now, there's one thing to keep in mind with custom dimensions. And that's cardinality. And that's just a fancy word that means the uniqueness of the data that you're sending through. So for instance, in that example where we have the item category as a shirt, we wouldn't want to have tens of thousands of item categories, as that's going to really mess with your reports, which is going to cause you to see an other row in your reports. And it can be a little frustrating to not be able to see all of your data. OK, so now what we're going to do in this demo is we're going to create a custom dimension on an event and parameter that we created in the previous tutorial for custom events, where we created a newsletter signup event that had a custom parameter of a form ID that told us which form was used to sign up for our newsletter. Was it the form in the footer, or was it the actual newsletter signup page that was used? Then we'll be able to use that data in our reports to understand better how our users are signing up for our newsletter. And we can even tell which page was used on the footer to sign up. But we can't do that without creating a custom dimension. So let's go over to our analytics account and do that now. All right, we're back on our website. And what we want to try to figure out is which form our users are using in order to sign up for our newsletter. So let's take a look at what that means. If we scroll down, we'll see that we have a newsletter sign up here, which is in the footer. And then we also have one on our newsletter page. So which form are users using? Are they going to the page to sign up, or are they using the footer on any page? And in order to figure that out, we created a custom event in a previous tutorial. So if you want to know how to get the custom event into GA, you need to check out that tutorial. But we created a newsletter signup event that has a parameter of form ID of which form was filled out. And the form ID is just the HTML element ID of that form. We created a different ID for the page than we did the footer. So now we need to be able to get that into GA, which we are sending already via the custom event. And we want to have that process so that we can have a report and know which one the users are using. So let's jump over to GA and see what it looks like. All right, if we go to our engagement reports and to events, we'll see that the newsletter signup is already here. OK, uh, but we don't have form ID anywhere. We can't see which form was used. We can see that there were signups. So this is good, but we want a little more information. So let's jump over to our Explorer. And we'll create a new exploration. And we're going to replicate that report and show how we would get that form ID in there. So we'll go and we'll add a new dimension. We'll add event name. And we'll add that to our rows. And then we need to add a metric. And we'll add event count for that. And we're going to double click event count. And then that's going to add it as a value down here. And that'll basically replicate the previous report that we saw. Now, we don't care about all the other events. We only care about the newsletter sign up. So we can create a filter on the event name and say that it exactly matches newsletter sign up, which should pop up if you've already sent events. And there we go. We have our newsletter sign up. So we know how many events there are but we don't know which form was used. And there's no way for us to figure this out until we create a custom dimension on the form ID parameter that we've sent in with our custom event. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, to create the custom dimension, we just need to go over to admin. And then we'll go to our custom definitions. And then we have custom dimensions and custom metrics. For this, we're going to create a custom dimension. So we create custom dimension. And we're going to name it our form ID. It's event scoped. You'll see that there are two different options here. There's event and user. And probably by the time you see this video, there will also be an item scoped. 
We're going to do event scoped here, but we'll cover user and item in future tutorials. Uh, we'll call this the, we'll give it a description of the form ID of the sign up form. All right. And then we need to choose a parameter. And it should already be here for us. Actually, we can see it here, our form ID. And that's the parameter that we sent in with our newsletter sign up event. And now all we need to do is save this. And we have our new custom dimension. Now, keep in mind that whenever we create this dimension, the data does need to be processed. So it may take some time up to 24 to 48 hours before that dimension is available for you to use it in a report or an exploration. Okay, we're back in our exploration where I have been patiently waiting for 24 to 48 hours for our data to process. And now what we can do is we can add that form ID to our exploration. So let's do it. We'll go, we'll say, we'll add a new dimension. We'll go to custom and there's our form ID that we just created or, you know, at some point we'll add that. And then we'll add that as a column to our report. Now, what you're going to notice is that we have this not set value right here. And what that means is that GA has not received data for that dimension, but that's not exactly true here because the problem is that we sent these events through prior to creating the custom dimension. So the only ones that are available to us are the ones that happen after you create the custom dimension. This is very important. So don't go deploy your new event with your new parameters and have that run for a while and think that you can create your dimension later. You need to create it at the same time so that your data is ready for processing. So let's go ahead and change our dates so that we see some data here. Let's do the last seven days. And now look what we have. We can tell which form was used in order for people to sign up. We have four on the footer and one on the newsletter page itself. This is pretty cool. We have some really valuable data here that can help us make changes to our website. Uh, but we can take this one step farther. Let's add another dimension. We'll add the uh, page and page title and screen name. And then we'll add that to the rows. And since it's always newsletter sign up, let's just take the event name out. And now what we can see is what page this actually happened on. Now, the newsletter sign up page is always going to be on the newsletter form. But we can tell in the footer that we have three from the home page and one from the about page. So this is valuable as well. We can tell which pages are performing the best and which ones people are getting to the footer and actually uh, signing up for. So if this were a blog or something, we could tell which blog was actually driving newsletter signups, uh, which is pretty valuable. And then we can use this data in the future for other things as well, which we'll get into in future tutorials. But hopefully this gave you a really good understanding of how to use custom dimensions to get more insights into what's happening on your site, which can help you uh, lead you to make better business decisions. All right, so if you like this video, please like it and subscribe, join our Discord server, and know that all the code for all of these examples is on our GitHub as well. Uh, please leave a comment or reach out on Discord if you have any videos that you want us to make, and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. All right, happy measuring.